Hi, it's Dwyer. It's April the 22nd, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about an NFL draft betting prop that was floated by an online sports book. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now yesterday, intertops.eu had a betting prop up that was intriguing. It was whether or not Tua, the Alabama quarterback, was going to be picked in the top three of this week's NFL draft. Right? If you thought he was going to be picked in the top three, you got rich odds. That was the underdog side of the play. If you felt that he was going to be picked outside of the top three, I believe you paid a minus 300. Well, let me just say this. Um, I've noticed that intertops.eu, a well-known German online sports book, and let's be adults, it's up to you to check the legality of you of using uh, these online sports books in your jurisdiction, right? But understand that the odds being offered for Tua to fall out of the top three were compelling odds, right? You're getting about a 30% rate of return if he falls outside the top three. Now, to me, this bet is a no-brainer. I don't believe Tua is a top three pick, and I understand there's certain people out there, Trent Dilfer, for example, who firmly believe in him. Right? Colin Cowherd, another sports observer who firmly believes in Tua. Certainly, it's hard to argue with his college record. And, of course, out of high school, he was very highly recruited. But I see a host of reasons why he's not a top three pick. The first is that two of the top three picks, in my opinion, have already been decided. You have an Ohio guy who just won the Heisman Trophy, just won the national championship. Right? He's 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, you have an Ohio team picking first in the draft. They have to think about public relations. They need a quarterback. Right? I think Cincinnati takes Joe Burrow, who's the overwhelming favorite to be picked first in the NFL draft. Burrow is also media savvy. Well, that takes us to the second pick, and I believe an argument can be made that the best player at any position on the board is Chase Young. Right? He's a great player. I just cannot see him slipping out of the top three. Now, I'll agree. The Redskins have been terrible year after year in the draft. No question about it. They, they've committed malpractice many times in the past. But understand, if the Redskins don't take Chase Young at two, I believe that some team is going to trade up to take him at three. So Tua literally only has one undecided spot in the top three to get picked. And I don't believe he's going to be picked in the top three for a host of reasons. Let's talk about them. First, right, let's be real here. Left-handed quarterbacks, and I understand there have been some great ones, Steve Young, one of the best quarterbacks I've seen, but left-handed quarterbacks face a longer road to get to the NFL than right-handed quarterbacks. That's because offensive lines are built to protect righties, right? Teams will bolster the left side of their offensive line to protect the blind side of their right-handed quarterback. So if I've built an offensive line for a righty, why would I want to diminish their effectiveness 
by then drafting a lefty. Right? The fact that Tua is left-handed, in my opinion, rightly or wrongly, this is not a politically correct part of the internet. We're just trying to assess the odds. Rightly or wrongly, the discrimination against lefties, and I say this as the father of a lefty, makes it more unlikely, creates a longer road for a left-handed quarterback candidate like Tua. Then, of course, there's the Wonderlick score. Now, I know this is a touchy subject with many. I know there are those who will say, didn't Dan Marino get a 10 on his Wonderlick? Well, let's remember, Dan Marino, Hall of Famer, got to a Super Bowl, first man to pass for 5,000 yards in an NFL season. Let's remember that Dan Marino slipped in the draft. Right, folks, this is a draft day bet. Right? Nothing I say here should be construed as me saying that Tua can't be a great quarterback. The question is whether or not NFL teams are going to view a 19 Wonderlick score fondly when other potential quarterback candidates like Justin Herbert scored well over 30. I think the Wonderlick score places Tua at a disadvantage against the other candidates. Let's talk about other reasons. Tua won't get drafted in the top three, despite all the hype, despite the statistical brilliance. Right? There's the injury problem. One of the absolute best athletes I have ever seen in my life, and I mean this, this guy's there in my mind with people like Michael Jordan, right? Usain Bolt, one of the best athletes I've seen in my life was Bo Jackson. Now, Bo Jackson hurt his hip and folks, it was over. He went from a freak athlete who was averaging over five yards a carry in a sport he called his hobby, football, right, to a guy who couldn't play football or baseball, right? There's a condition called necrosis, and the problem with necrosis, it's my understanding, and I'm not a medical doctor, is that if you hurt your hip, you're more likely down the road to get necrosis. Worse yet, they even claim that sometimes you hurt your hip, you look like you're well, and then months later you develop necrosis. Now, Tua badly hurt his hip. This is with him having had other injuries. This is with him being a tad undersized, right? It's a rough combination. There's a lot of discrimination out there, right? A lot of criteria that people use to separate out client, um, candidates. So here you have a guy who is smaller. Now, if the guy comes across as durable, folks will overlook the size gap. But the minute you're a little bit smaller, think Drew Brees, and you have an injury, that's going to lead to some people deciding not to go with you. Nick Saban famously did not take Drew Brees as his quarterback with the Miami Dolphins. He instead picked Dante Culpepper, or at least the Dolphins' powers that be, picked Dante Culpepper. Right? Baker Mayfield doesn't have the injury history that a Tua has. I believe when a quarterback is smaller and he's been hurt a few times, and some of the injuries have been major, the hip injury increases the risk of other injuries down the road. I think teams shy away. When you consider Tua's 
injury history. You need to couple that with concerns over his size. Right? Drew Brees as a saint has been healthy. Right? Until recently. I know Bridgewater played several games for Drew Brees. I know there's concern with gamblers over whether Drew Brees is going to play a full 16-game season this year. I'm just telling you, there wouldn't be the same level of concern if Drew Brees were, let's say, Joe Burrow's size. I believe to his size and to his injury history is going to work against him. Let me also say, too, that you have a problem with the talent around him. Right? He had arguably the best group of wide receivers to throw the ball to in college football last year. Some of these guys are going to be picked in the first round of this week's NFL draft. The question is what he does with average NFL receivers. What happens if the receiver doesn't have a distinct advantage over the DB covering him? I think the very high talent level at Alabama, both with the wide receivers and with Tua's offensive line, works against him as an NFL prospect. Understand, Justin Herbert is, in my opinion, and I'm a Pac-12 guy, he is the best athlete at the quarterback position in this draft. And he didn't have as much to work with at Oregon as Tua did at Alabama. There is a crowd out there who believes that if Herbert had been Alabama's quarterback, his numbers would have flown off the page like Tua's numbers flew off the page. Right? There are people who feel that there's a multiplier when you play for Alabama. Because you're going to have a good line, you're going to have great wide receivers, you're going to have an excellent defense. Right? I understand that there are those who will then say, hey, but wait a moment. Alabama plays tough teams. Right? Didn't Alabama play LSU during the regular season? I agree. The SEC schedule is a tough schedule. But just understand. If you're looking at film and you see what Tua has accomplished, you're going to notice the skill level of the guys blocking for him and the guys catching his balls. And the teams that pick early in the NFL draft, let's just say they don't have the huge talent level of the great teams in the NFL. They're picking early in the NFL draft for a reason. So given the issues of being a left-handed quarterback who's a little bit undersized with an injury history with not a great Wonderlick score. Coming from a school that typically had more talent than its opponents, I just don't see how Tua gets picked in the top three of an NFL draft when you know that two of the top three spots will be taken by Joe Burrow and Chase Young. Right? Especially when you have Love, Utah State's quarterback. Keep in mind, people are concerned about his interceptions two years ago. He threw something like six or seven the entire season. And that guy has one of the best arms among the prospects. Right? Love probably has a better arm than Tua. Then, of course, you have Herbert, who, in addition to being the best athlete at the position with size, he's also a guy who was an academic All-American. Right? And who has the Wonderlick score. That would support that distinction. So I think Tua slips out of the top three in the NFL draft if you can find that bet. If Intertops posts that bet later today, then uh, just understand that 
if I had to bet that prop will give me plausible deniability here with this email, I would bet that Tua does not get picked in the top three of the NFL draft. Just understand, too, that there's a guy, World Wide West, who I've made a couple of videos with here online, who's on the other side of that play. Right? He firmly believes that two is going to be in the top three, that there are enough teams in the NFL who need quarterbacks for them to, you know, move up. He believes that Nick Saban has enough credibility with talent evaluators in this league, and Saban has given Tua his highest vote of confidence. Right? I believe it's a PR moment here in the NFL. I think Tua is a nice guy. I think Tua is well spoken in interviews. I think Tua looks like he could be a role model down the road. I just don't think that I would take Tua in the top three of this NFL draft. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me go one step further. I believe Miami has the fifth pick in this draft. Right? I understand. There's some thought process that Tua is the kind of guy who would appeal to Bill Belichick. And so he likely appeals to Brian Flores, who's a Bill Belichick disciple, right? He's someone who used to work with Bill Belichick. He's part of the Bill Belichick coaching tree, right? I'm just telling you that Justin Herbert is more Tom Brady than Tua is, right? Tua is a smaller guy who you know, isn't the drop-back passer at times that I think Justin Herbert projects to be. So I'll even be surprised if the Dolphins at five take Tua over Herbert. Now that said, if Tua gets picked fifth, great. Well, you win the bet anyway, because that's outside the top three. But I'm not even buying the hype that the Dolphins or the Chargers right behind the Dolphins are going to take this guy, take the Chargers. I think Tua would face a challenge beating out Tyrod Taylor for the starting spot with the Chargers. Let's remember that Tyrod Taylor led the Buffalo Bills to the playoffs in the past. Right? Tyrod Taylor is a very good quarterback. It was only because he was on a team with Philip Rivers that he was in the co-pilot seat. Right? Tyrod Taylor is a guy who not only can lead you to the playoffs, he has led you to the playoffs. Also, Tyrod is a leader. Right? He's also an NFL veteran. He's supposed to be very good in the locker room. So, why would I replace... Tyrod Taylor. The knock on Taylor is he's a bit undersized. With another quarterback who might be undersized. Understand, in the pocket, Tua is not Fran Tarkington. He's not Russell Wilson. He's not elusive like that. He's more of a Baker Mayfield type guy, right? Where he's in the pocket and he's trying to throw the football. He's not a Steve Young who people forget. Steve Young was a freak athlete. He's not a Steve Young who can outrun linebackers. Right? He's going to get caught by linebackers. So why would I replace Tyrod Taylor with a younger version of Tyrod Taylor? If I'm going to replace Tyrod Taylor, it has to be with a bigger, better athlete. Someone like Justin Herbert. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.